Namaste, Mother Nuggets. Uh, welcome. Uh, what's this? What is this? Dungeons and Dragons, 4th edition books. What the heck? Yeah, hi. This is another one of those little rambly videos, so I'm going to try something a little bit new. Um, and like I said, I'm trying to make some videos that are a bit, uh, you know, on the cheap. Make some content, you know, without having to content it up and do lots of editing and stuff like that. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about Dungeons Dragons 4th Ed. I have a lot of nostalgia for playing this, and I kind of really want to do some solo role-playing runs, um, with, with this, and, um, see how we go. Uh, that's, that's what I want to do. <laughs> but before I do that, I thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity. Let's talk a bit about 4th Ed. I think 4th Ed is much maligned. Um, and I, I, I also was once one of the maligners. Oh, hi, my chief security officer, Gohan. I don't know if you can hear his little jingle bell. Hey, he's checking things out. He's like, oh, I hear you're talking about 4th Ed d, d You better not be causing a ruckus. That's what he's saying to me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, man, these books are well loved. Look, they're all, like, grimy from where we played. All right, let me, let, let's have story time. Story time. Uh, I, so... I used to work in a gaming shop back in uh, when when these came out, like 2005, 2006. Does it have copyright on it somewhere? And um, I remember when it came out, and I was like, "Man, what are you talking about? Like, we just we just had that, um, you know, we just Third Ed's not that old, right? Like, I remembered Third Ed coming out, um, built on previous editions by Gary Gygax, Zeb Cook, Jonathan Tweet, Monty Cook, Skip Williams, etc." Yeah, wow. Um, so, I, um, yeah, like I, where is it? Copyright. Am I blind? Is it not here? 2008. There you go. So, I was working when these things came out. Nearly 2008. That's a lot later than I thought it was. And I remember being like, man, I, like, we don't need a new edition. We don't need that, blah, blah, blah. And then it came out and uh, kind of everyone was like, oh, it's just wow. They're trying to cash in on wow. And um, I was very much of that. I'm like, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. And then eventually I was like, you know what? I give up. I'm going to buy it and we'll give it a go. And then it turned out to be one of my favorite things to run. <laughs> like I started running it because um, we had to kind of, you know, run it for our local club. That was the most current edition. And I was like, all right, well, we'll run it. And then I, I very much fell in love with it as a game. It's really cool. It's a really good way of playing D&D. It is very different to how D&D went. So... What I wanted to talk about today, I guess, is, first of all, why do people hate this? Why was my gut reaction to hate it? Um, but secondly, like, what is it and what is it not? And so um, I thought maybe we could have a little chat about that. So if you have ideas and comments and you want to talk about it, please leave comments below and let's let's make this a discussion, not just a me talking thing. I'd love to hear your opinions about it. So um, let's talk a bit about how I got into D&D. So I... Started playing Dungeons and Dragons through Baldur's Gate. Me and my friends were super into that. Just before Baldur's Gate 2 came out, we used to play online. And then one day I was like, hey, you know, this is based on like some books and paper and stuff. And we could just do whatever. Instead of playing the LAN on the computers, we could just play at lunchtime or whatever. And um, I bought the then Third Ed, which was brand new, D&D uh, &D stuff. And I ruined a Christmas holiday. I was told by my aunt, you're reading at the table, you're ruining Christmas. <laughs> I read those books cover to cover. Um, and I, you know, and, and then I ran them for my friends for ages. And, um, but I remember Second Ed and like one of my friends was like, yeah, my, my dad plays Second Ed and he's got all his old Second Ed stuff and blah, like we, we'd hear lots of stories and we'd go, uh, this was during school. So we'd go during school holidays. We'd basically set up, we'd have some dinner and then we'd role play until we kind of couldn't role play anymore at 3am. And then we'd wake up sort of, you know, the next morning at seven, we'd have some breakfast, which was usually like leftover pasta or dinner or whatever. And then we just keep role playing until 3am the next morning. And we do that for like three or four days straight. So we had like these massive role playing sessions, monster role playing sessions with second ed. Um, and, you know, we'd hear the, we'd hear the tales of, you know, uh, so that was a third ed and we'd hear the tales of second ed and stuff like that. And so I did learn about the rules of second ed, you know, and, and I, being the kind of person I was like, I wanted to see where it came from. And um, for me, I feel like, and this is, I still feel this way with Third Ed. I feel like, you know, first edition was kind of working out what it was. It was taking it from that tabletop gaming 
situation into like what we now know as role playing. And then second edition was kind of giving you that more customization and, and making it, um, you know, uh, more storytellable. Um, and then kind of third edition, I felt like third edition was the simplification of that, right? So like second ed gets went back before fourth ed and fifth ed existed. Third ed was kind of, um, you know, it was crunchy, but the attitude for second ed was that like, you know, oh, if you want to be a game master, you have to memorize tables. Like you have to look up tables. You have to know that. There was a lot of kind of... Um, shit thrown at Thacko and like why are you just like why are you counting down why are you not counting up why are you making it more confusing than it needs to be things like that and then kind of the vibe I got was that you know third edition is like one plus one equals two you can't get any simpler than that you've got a dice you've got your d20 which I have here you know you've got your ability score uh you know and then you've got uh, you know, any other things that add up to that. Maybe you're in a favorable situation. Maybe you're in a not favorable situation. And you're going to roll and you're going to compare that to a very simple number, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20. Like, they're, they're usually brackets of how challenging something is. You can't get any simpler than that. And the argument I have for proving that is that's what all the other systems are, right? Like, look at Palladium, look at Call of Cthulhu, the D100 system. Um you know, generally speaking, that is what, you know, look at the D6 systems, that's what it is, ability score plus modifiers equals result, right, like, you can't get any simpler than 1 plus 1 equals 2, um, and, like, mathematically, if, if something's harder, you just add a harder modifier, add, you know, and there's a rule, plus 3, rule of plus 3, rule of plus 5, depending upon, you know, what kind of difficulty and what things you're looking at, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So for me, I felt like third edition is the simplest form that um, D and D can be. And I know that it now has this reputation for being really crunchy and mathematical. And I think Pathfinder definitely has a um, sort of uh, a hand in being the reason for that. Um, and you know, three point five kind of addressing some of the changes and stuff. But for me, I never really felt the need for three point five. Our friend group never really struggled with the rules and stuff that were there. So for me, third edition was the simplest form. And the reason why I'm telling you this, you're like, but I thought you wanted to talk about fourth edition. Fourth edition came out, and as you can see, it is a, like it is the opposite of what third edition is. So like if you look at um you know how how it went from first edition to second edition, things got a bit more simple. Second edition to third edition, things got more simple. And then fourth edition, we're adding in at will powers and you know uh, utility powers and dailies and encounters and like you're making it more complicated. And so for me, my gut reaction was that like fourth edition is making it more complicated than it needed to be. It didn't really um, you know have the same vibe to it. Um, but we also have, you know, 4th edition walked so that 5th edition could run in many respects. Uh, you know, I say that about Critical Role as well, like, yeah, Acquisitions Incorporated walked so Critical Role could run, you know, like, um, it, it was, it was, you know, they, they really laid, laid a lot of the groundwork for making D&D as popular as it is now, right? Like, back in the 90s and the 2000s, like, I, I used to have, I, I, our gaming shop was... Uh, like in a local sort of shopping area and there was like uh, McDonald's and KFC and stuff like we'd go over to get lunch but to do that we'd have to walk through a skate park and so as we'd go through the skate park I would get rocks thrown at me because I was a fucking D&D &D nerd right like it was um, you know it, it, like that was that was what they would shout at me as they were as they were throwing the stone the literal hunks of concrete at me um, you know like it, it was you know not as Oh, you play D D. You're a bit nerdy, which is what it is now. Like I, there was a lot of bullying that happened back then. Again, it was a different era. A lot more bullying. Violence is never okay, but um, you know, and we don't want to glorify that with our nostalgia goggles. But yeah, that's definitely a thing. Anyway, so um, like even just being a fighter, right? Like think of what being a fighter is like in you know D D. Any D D. I rolled a hit. I rolled, like it is very complicated in here. You've got all these different powers you can choose from. You've got, you know, all these different, uh, you know, it's very tactical. Um, and so there was also a bit of cynicism as well. Because it is so tactical, it is so um, uh, almost computer-like, uh, th there was kind of an argument that, oh, they're pushing to sell the minis, right? Like, I don't know if we can see that, if it fits there. But, uh, you know, they're pushing to sell the miniatures. you got to spend money so you can get the minis so that you can play their game their way. Which I don't think that's true. I mean, like, if you've seen my collection, which I'm sure you have... 
we all have minis, right? Like, <laughs> we were all playing with minis anyway. Um, and in fact, I quite like that tactical act. Uh, the, the tacticality of it is what actually makes it better for me. And I guess we'll talk about that in a bit more when, when I get there. But yeah, you can see, like, you know, it's very, um, it's very WoW inspired, very MMO inspired. Um, and uh, again, that was another one of the critiques of it is it's like, oh, it's like playing World of Warcraft. But if I want to play what that's what I had a friend who used to, uh, every time we mentioned fourth edition, they'd be like, if I want to play World of Warcraft, I will just get on and play World of Warcraft, right? And when I was running it and trying to teach our gaming group how to play it, um, that was one of the big, uh, that's one of the hardest obstacles to overcome is a lot of them want to link because it has that similarity. A lot of them want to link that to world of warcraft and mmos but it is its own game and you have to remind yourself of that that it is um a little bit different it's not just you know wow in a in a booklet it is a bit different um but yeah that's that's fourth i think that's one of the reasons why it gets so much hate uh and then you know it get they, they had a really hard reset right after this they didn't lean into that complication that complexity of this system they abandoned it because they did have a, a bad reaction Additionally, this is another thing, right? So, like, Third Ed had a very powerful OGL, Open Games License, where if you were a creator, you could create whatever you wanted, um, and as long as you put that little OGL in, you were okay, right? And as we've seen, there's been a backlash of that with Fifth Ed as well. Um, but Fourth Ed locked that down. This was really the first, like, kind of pay, to, pay us to play the game, like, grift that they did. Um, there was an online character generator. There was online... They had a lot of the resources online, and you had to pay your you know, d d online subscription or whatever to, to get access to it. I did not do that. I actually had a pirated version of the character creator. C having a character creator definitely helps you understand how to make a character. And then once you've made it, 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 it looks a lot simpler. Like reading the book, it feels hard to make a character, but it's actually quite easy. Um, it just is a lot of reading through and choosing and sort of min-maxing what you want to do. Um, not that min-maxing is the right word, but like picking what you want to do. Um, if you haven't played before, it is a bit interesting. So you do, you know, you've still got your races and classes and things, but each class has what we now know as kind of a build, I guess. Um, but you, you can see here when you're creating, that there are like streams. You don't have to take the streams, but if you take the streams, you'll have powers that kind of work well together. I think the best example of this is the rogue, if I can find where the rogue is. Um... Let's have a look. If I was smart, I would have gone ahead and, like, done it. This looks right. Rogue, yeah. So you've got, like, a brawny rogue, which is, like, dealing... Like, that's your damage build. And then you've got a trickster rogue. And so if you look at the powers for the, um, you know, the, the brawny rogue, it's about, like, do you deal lots of damage or are you, um, you know, moving them around? So, uh, like, Deft Strike, you know, you deal some damage... Um, it's, you know, dex versus that. You can also move beforehand. You're wielding, you know, you, you, you're just lunging stuff in. It's like a default attack. Um, piercing strike is a similar sort of deal, right? Um, you know, but then you get these these more fancy strikes. So if you're the, the deal damage rogue, a calculate strike, you leave your flow vulnerable to an adept repost should he dare attack you. So you deal your attack, you do your damage, uh, if the target attacks you before the start of your next turn, you make your repost against the target as an immediate interrupt. A strength versus AC attack deals one wound uh, plus strength modifier damage, right? So if you're the, the damage thing, you, you hit him, you mark him, and then you're like, okay, if he att attacks me again, I get a second one. Whereas the other build, which is, you know, here it's um, you know, Sly Flourish, your, your Distracting Flourish, cause an enemy to forget the blade at his throat. Um, and you're dealing extra charisma damage with that one. That's not the right one. What am I looking at? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Positioning strike. This is the one I was talking about. Uh, if you know, if you're taking that trickster rogue thing, um, you know, you are gonna leave the target dazed, or you are gonna slide the target one square. So you're you're hitting them and you're making them move around. Sorry, it was the encounter powers, not the at will powers that I should have been talking about. Um, you know, so you're you're hitting them, or you know, King's Castle. You're switching places with them rather than dealing that extra damage. Whereas if you're the brutal guy, you're gonna take torture strike, where it's just you're dealing extra damage. You know, you, you just double the damage that you'd normally be dealing. So, you know, you, you, you have these powers to move people around. You have these powers to control the, the board state. Um, and so it is very, you know, World of Warcrafty where you're moving people around. You're, 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 you're doing at-will powers. You're doing encounter powers. So they've got a cooldown. You have to wait. Um, 
you know, and so that, those comparisons, I think, because it was of its time as well, you know, WoW was, like, in its height then. It was it was leading up, you know, Wrath of the Lich King. It was at its very peak where everyone was playing World of Warcraft as well. So making those comparisons, kind of rejecting it, rejecting the cynicism of the pay-to-play model, rejecting how it was more complicated than the previous one, um, you know. And then, as I said, you know, they completely have gone back back on that when they were looking at um you know fifth edition they completely rejected the premise of of what they set out here which is a shame because i think this is actually a superior game in many ways i find it more fun um and it's also more fun to watch like whilst i appreciate the theater of the mind and the sort of theater kids that come with uh critical role you know uh and and that sort of thing like actually watching this be played properly um it becomes, you know, it's like watching a combination of theatre and chess, right? You're telling the story, but, you know, you when you get to combat, it is, um, it is entertaining as a combat as well, right? Like, if you look at combat in normal D&D, it's like, oh, I swing, I swing, I swing, oh, I cast a spell, I swing, I swing, I swing, I cast a spell, uh, maybe I take a potion. Like, it's not very uh, intricate, but you have choices to make in this game, and that's what I think makes it... Um, superior. Uh, and then 5th edition, you know, again, I feel like 5th edition was like going back to 3rd edition, taking some of the things from this. So there's still some at-wheel stuff. There's still... And even Pathfinder took at-wheel stuff and, um, you know, stole that from 4th edition and, and sort of made that have its, you know, at-wheel power and your spell casting in particular, like giving spell casters that ability to do something every combat rather than just run out of spells, you know? <laughs> like you can take feats where you have those... Um, you know, you have those things. Anyway, so that's, that's, uh, I wanted to, you know, say that's kind of why I think this is rejected. Um, and let's, uh, I guess let's talk about what, what it is and if it's good. Um, I don't know. How long have we been going for? Uh, yeah, maybe we make that its own video. Um, and see, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at what exactly what D and D fourth ed is and, if it's any good, right? <laughs> let's let's put it that way um, in its own video. So I'll end this. Ciao for now. And um, I'll see you later.